Hello, hello. You are listening to episode number 26 of Tie Pod. And today I am so very excited because we are being joined by Michaela McNatt, who is an intuitive mentor, business coach, and NLP practitioner. She and I totally bonded in the DMs over like things like Reiki and energy and what it means to be a leader. And honestly, very quickly we realized, yes, we have got to get her on Tie Pod <laughs> so we can just have this chat for you guys. And she is amazing in that she specializes in helping her clients build businesses that are soul aligned with ease and flow. Hi there. Thanks for tuning in to Tie Pod, a podcast crafted by Tiana Tai to help you purify your purpose in business, love, and life. Whether you're an entrepreneur, dog mom, or just getting started, you're bound to find value as Tiana dives into meaningful topics each episode. So settle in, turn up the volume, and welcome your host, Tiana Tai. I've got to take just a quick second to ask you for a serious bit of support. Tie Pod would not be possible without your reviews, your comments, and just all of the positive feedback that we've been receiving so far. So if you haven't already, please go on, hit subscribe to make sure you're not missing out on any of this good and free content, and also be sure to leave a review. You may think that I'm not looking at them, but I swear to you, my friend, I read every single review and it just makes my heart so happy. So if you haven't already done so, Hit pause, leave a review, and then let's get back to the goodness. So, Michaela, thank you so much for being here today. I would love for you to just take the mic and tell us a little bit more about yourself. Oh, you are awesome, Tiana. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to connect with your tribe, your crew, um, and hopefully serve them in some magical ways today. So um, as you mentioned, I am an intuitive mentor and business coach, upcoming trainer of NLP, Reiki master. Um, and through the years of being in the online space, it has kind of evolved into what it is today, and I'm sure it will continue to evolve. Um, but as essentially what all of those words mean, I do a lot of inner work, a lot of healing work with my clients so they can truly embody the mindset, the frequency, the energy to attract the businesses, yes, the income, yes, uh, but more importantly, the lives that they truly desire. I don't believe that we have to wait on things. I really think that we can tap into our desires here and now in the present and begin creating beautifully abundant areas of every aspect of our life here and now. So um, yeah, I started out in the online space uh, as a fitness coach, actually, which I don't know if you know that. I uh, didn't. Yeah, I've made quite a few pivots in my short amount of time in the online space. But um, when you mentioned it earlier about creating that soul aligned business has been something that um, I myself have embodied from day one. And with that came as I evolved as a human, my business really evolved shortly after that. And that's something that I really teach, like listen to the nudge of curiosity, follow the bliss, follow the the joy, follow the excitement. And starting out as a fitness coach in the online space, I was a CrossFit coach actually leading up to that um, kind of in-person fitness training for six, seven years before I pivoted into the online world, which I had no idea even existed before that point in time. It kind of went down this rabbit hole of, oh my goodness, there are so many people who are entrepreneurs and talk about the things they love all the time. Like what is going on? Um, I just <laughs> had no idea that it was even an op an opportunity at that point in time. So kind of jumped in with the, I should do this because this is my background when really my passions and my desires were mindset, healing, uh, at the time, personal development. And um, very quickly after, pivoted more into a life kind of uh, clarity coach for women. And then as I began to create abundance there myself. It's kind of like the universe always in your favor, right? It started to send me a lot of clients who wanted to just emulate and model what I was doing. So then from there, naturally evolved into more of a business coach. Um, as mm -hmm. many of us in the entrepreneurial space, our personal development and sometimes our spiritual journeys go hand in hand. And the deeper I went within myself and the deeper I went in my healing journey and my spiritual path, I really began to see the two go hand in hand. You know, the deeper I went within myself, I felt the more 
more my business expanded. And the more I trusted my intuitive gifts, the more my business expanded. So really, once again, began pulling some of that work into what I do today. Lots of law of attraction work, manifestation work. Uh, now as a Reiki master, really tying in uh, the energetic healing um, in addition to the fun manifestation work, right? We always want to do the fun like visualizing, but sometimes it's not as fun to do the healing. So really oh, bringing yeah. in that work, creating safety for my clients to explore themselves you know, while building their businesses and knowing they can do it hand in hand. They don't have to do all the inner work first before they can, you know, build the businesses. They can do it at the same time. Um, and really the work that I do is it's, I would say it's an integration of business and uh, spiritual mentorship in the sense of guiding my clients through what I myself have gone through over the past few years. So love what I do. It's It will be interesting to see just as we evolve as humans, what my business looks like even a year from now, but always trying to practice what I preach and really embody the work and once again, just leading with that heart path, leading with that heart-centered uh, energy and sharing what feels good, uh, teaching what feels good, coaching on what feels good, and trusting that when I really lead in alignment, I am always going to be abundantly provided for. So in a nutshell, that's kind of what I do and in short, how I got here. What an amazing nutshell. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So I'm I'm really curious and I feel like our listeners are going to be curious like if you have an example of what that may look like in real time. So when you think of the women that are coming to you and you know obviously they're building their businesses hand in hand, mm -hmm. but what are some of those examples of like energetic blocks or barriers that they're overcoming at the same time that you see a lot? Yeah, so the biggest one that just came to mind is this idea of on a surface level, if you're using a lot of shoulds in your language, that's one that I see really, really often. Um, newer entrepreneurs, but also established entrepreneurs. I work with some women who are going through pivots in real time, and it's always this like, well, shouldn't I be doing it this way? Or shouldn't I be showing up this way? Or you see another coach in your same uh, niche who's doing it one way, so you think that you should be doing it that way too. Um, mm -hmm. When you have that type of language, there's usually something deeper, a little bit going on there. So um, a lack of trust in self, a fear that if you do something slightly different, it's not going to work out when in reality, in any given moment, there are limitless possibilities and opportunities and uh, people build businesses in many different ways, right? I teach a lot of you know, law of attraction work, embodying uh, what it is you desire before you can attract it. And it's like when we think about what you are desiring right now, whether it's, uh, you know, a couple more clients in your practice or hitting that first 5K month or that first 10K, 20K month, whatever it is, the the thing that I always start with is we first must tap into the energy of that woman before you'll ever attract the systems and the teammates and the clients in order to hit that month. So if you are unable to tap into that energy of what it feels like to be that woman who is easily and effortlessly creating and generating 20K Per month in their business, then what is the disconnect? Like wh what's going on there? Do you feel uh, like it's maybe not possible deep down? Do you feel like uh, it's going to take away from your family time, right? When we really start to get curious, there's probably something a little bit deeper going on there, um, sometimes at a subconscious level. But bringing it back to if you're using the word should, or if it's really hard for you to feel into what it would feel like to have it. Like if you can't close your eyes and imagine what is it going to feel like to have this, you know, goal being hit or achieving this milestone in your business, then there's probably something going on. And as for what, like I said, it could be many different things going on. But I think first the awareness of, hmm, maybe I have been using the word should. Maybe I'm potentially doing something out of alignment. Maybe I do have some sort of block going on. And uh, as for some examples of some of those blocks that could be going on, I hit on them a, a few times, but worthiness is always a big thing. And that could on a service level show up as like, oh, well, like that'll just never be me. Like that's for some entrepreneurs, but only, you know, a couple end up at that level or only people with 10K followers will, you know, get to at that level. I could never get there. Right. On the surface, you're not saying, you know, I'm not worthy of having that, but there's probably something going on there. Some self-sabotage coming up, which I don't even love the word self-sabotage. The deeper I go in, in my work as an NLP trainer and just the healing work I do, it's really just a protection mechanism when these fears creep in. This part of your brain is really trying to protect you from something because it's new, but for sake of what most of us know, the idea of self-sabotage kind of creeps in. Maybe you saw uh, mom or dad make a lot of money growing up and stressed out a lot, right? 
right? Mm. You know, more money, more problems. Um, on the surface, you might be like, well, of course I want to make more money. But deep down, maybe there's some kind of correlation to the more money you make, the more struggles you're going to have, right? So these are a lot of really common things um, that I see with women really at all stages of their business always kind of a worthiness thing or a safety thing. If sometimes we're so worried about our ability to make the money, we're actually resisting it because once again, we're not tapping into that energy of having it. So uh, that's the power of this work when you can do the healing work and when you can really go inwards and begin to shift some of these beliefs that are going on that maybe aren't serving you to the highest level, that's really where you can get back into alignment and really start to tap into the frequency of that six-figure, multiple six-figure earner that you are really calling in for yourself. Yes. Oh, goodness. Okay. So I have so many thoughts going on right now, <laughs> but what's coming, What? yeah, what's coming forward for me is, you know, I focus so heavily on leadership and teams and all of these things. And a lot of times I feel like we think that that's something very far off mm -hmm. in the distance, mm -hmm. especially when we're new entrepreneurs. So I would love to kind of explore these concepts of self-sabotage and worthiness and all of these things that you're so often seeing and kind of apply them to the solopreneur who may be transitioning into leadership and what that is going to feel like like energetically from your perspective. I'm so curious yeah. about what your take on this is going to be. Yeah, totally. So I kind of hit on it a little bit before. It's this idea of tapping into the energy or the essence of the things that you're desiring before you quite have it yet, which I know for some, you know, it's that uh, I, I had a client once say to me, she's like, how the heck could I tap into how it feels to have a 10K month? I've never had a 10K month, Michaela. And it's like, okay, like I, I get it, right? Like you've never had a team before or you've never, you know, had several people under you that you are guiding and leading before. So how on earth could you potentially tap into it? And this is where I really love to integrate both the NLP, which is neurolinguistic programming, a lot of work with the subconscious mind with some of the magic and the woo and the, the spiritual side, because they really are the same things. It's just a matter of what you call them, which is really cool. So <laughs> when you look at something like the law of attraction, uh, we must first be an energetic match to the thing that we want in order to call it in the saying of like, you know, like attracts like or what we focus on expands, uh, we first must in our bodies in our feelings in our essence in our frequency all kind of synonymous, we must first embody what it feels like to be that CEO, six figure, multiple six figure powerhouse leader and expert, we must first feel that in our bodies to ever attract it and call it into existence. And what's fun now at the kind of circling back to, well, how could I feel into that if I've never had it? Well, our subconscious mind knows no difference between reality and fantasy. So when we can close our eyes and simply start to see that vision in our mind's eye and see ourselves, you know, on the, the Zoom call with, you know, your five teammates, or when you see yourself on that stage, or when you see yourself looking at that bank statement and seeing your highest income month, le month yet, your subconscious actually thinks that is really happening right now. So when you start to, I don't like the word trick, but when you kind of start playing with the brain a little bit to have it believe and see like, oh, this is really happening, you're very quickly going to start feeling those feelings in your body. And that's where we really start tapping into, we call it like kind of like the vortex in the law of attraction world. We really start tapping into uh, the vortex or this downstream energy where things start to feel a little bit easier because now we're being in this way. We are embodying CEO, six-figure, multiple six-figure leader, right? Like we start to really tap into her energy more than uh, we would when it's kind of just like down the road, right? Because how often mm -hmm. is it like, well, it's just, well, I'll, I'll feel that way when that happens or I'll finally be the CEO when I hit the number. Well, no, we have to first be the CEO, tap into the CEO energy before we're ever going to attract the results that the CEO has. So simple visualizations, closing your eyes, seeing what you'll see, hearing what you'll hear, feeling what you'll feel when you have all of these things that you're calling in. And when I say calling in like your goals, your intentions, right? When you really start to just simply close your eyes and feel into it. You will be amazed at how quickly the universe or God or spirit or energy, whatever you kind of believe in, um, uh, even coincidence, right? Whatever you want to go by, you'll be amazed at what starts to kind of fall into place. And then also you're programming your subconscious mind to be a leader and 
being in a, a leader mentality and embodying the beliefs and the essence of a leader, you're probably going to start showing up in a little bit of a different way too, right? Your actions are probably going to start aligning with what you want. You're probably going to show up in a little bit more of like a, a magnetic or a energetic type personality. You're going to start really being in that way. You're going to probably be more efficient. You're probably going to show up on uh, social media as a much more potent, powerful leader, expert, right? You're going to start to see your actions begin to shift as well. So that's really what it looks like from step one is just really beginning to feel into what it is that you were trying to call in. Ah, yes. Okay. So what came to mind for me just now was like, I thought about this past client that I had, and they weren't used to the concept of being a leader at all, right? And I'm not NLP. I don't really do energetic work, but we did do some manifestation and like uh, future journaling, those sorts of things. Yeah. And it was really, really interesting because the feedback that I got from them, I think it was a few weeks after they had done the exercise, they were just like, I've gotten more compliments around Mm. my leadership than I ever have. And they were like, I'm not even sure what I changed. And so when you're, as you're describing this, because Mm -hmm. we we did some tactical things, I'm a very tactical person. But even so, as you're describing this, I just couldn't help but think of that person. Because it was like, because they kind of put themselves into those shoes and started thinking of themselves in that way, somehow they truly were showing up in a way that felt different to people. Yes, people feel it. Exactly. I was just going to say that so we're on the same wavelength there people so feel it um a prime example just from personal experience really shifting into the belief that I get to make my energy my number one priority and with that alone when I have more fun I make more money people want to be in my energy more when I prioritize my energy above all else and sometimes that comes before showing up on Instagram that day like if I've got Mm -hmm. a jam-packed day of client calls or I'm doing some personal stuff or whatever it is if my energy is any kind of funky I'm not going to show up because people are going to feel that and I, I got on a discovery call this week and the woman was like I don't know what it is, but like, I just want to be in your energy. Like, I just want, like, I'm just so drawn to your energy and people so feel it. So it's a real thing and and they're not going to know what it is, right? It's all like subconscious energetic. They're just going to, when I I saw a beautiful quote recently along the lines of when people pay to be in your energy, it's your job to like keep that on point. Like it is literally Mm -hmm. your job to be sure your energy is on point because you're going to be holding space for other people. It's a disservice if you don't. Um, So I thought that was really powerful, this exact concept that we're talking about. And your client, you know, real time was experiencing it too. I'm sure me, I'm sure all the strategy and the tactics were, you know, complimenting that for sure. We have to show up. Right. And ultimately, like if, if your vibe is low, if you're off, if you're grumpy, if you're exhausted, if you're you know, with some lower vibration beliefs going on, people might not want to be in your energy, right? It's mm-hmm. going to bring them down too. So I think it's super powerful, easy to forget as entrepreneurs, right? I know many of us are, you know, type A, go, 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 hustle our face off. And we've all been there. And that's beautiful. There's a time for hustle. Like there's a time for it, right? As long as we can do the actions and push from, that really, uh, like I'm seeing like just this really bright star in, in my mind's eye of just like that really bright, exciting, lit up energy. Right. Ooh, okay. So what I'm thinking about right now, because you you mentioned like showing up with your energy and really like taking care of it, first of all, Mm -hmm. uh, so that you can show up in the best way. And we put it in the context of like your clients. Now, I'm curious for your perspective on how that would translate to somebody who does have at least one team member, right? What are your thoughts on showing up energetically with the people that you are basically employing right now? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's really the same idea, right? I think even more so with your team because they're going to match and model you. The way you show up is going to set the standard for the way your team shows up. And from just a kind of mindset positivity point of view, your role as a leader is to keep these people inspired and to keep these people lit up about the mission that you are on in your business. So for you to show up with, oh my gosh, you know, I don't know if things are going to go right this month. Like, what is that doing to your team, (laughs) right? Immediately, it's going to decrease that morale. So if anything, I think it's 
even more important to be sure that when you are showing up with that CEO hat on, you are showing up with that CEO hat on and and CEOs, they're going to get it done. They're going to show up in that uh, like bad B energy. They're going to really embody that really high frequency and it's magnetic. That's the, the, the word of today, I guess. It's really magnetic. People are going to follow along and they're going to match that right back to you. They're going to reflect it right back to you. So same kind of thing. Of course, there's power in being human. There's power to being real with your team. And that's something too on this note, both for people with teammates and not solopreneurs still, there's power still to being human. So I definitely don't want you to get off this show and be like, Michaela just wants me to be positive 24 seven. That's not (laughs) what I'm saying. There's really, there's much power to embracing the full spectrum of emotions. And so with that of, you know, being sure that our energy is our top priority, there's power still to being human and giving yourself permission to, you know, expressing what's really going on with your team and being real and raw and vulnerable with them and your clients and your communities, right? I think what it comes down to is like when you're really trying to uh, call in a next level, when you're trying to grow as a team, when you're trying to hit that new goal, hit that next level expansion, you're not going to do that from a low vibe state. You're going to do that from a really hyped up energetic state. Hmm. And as you say that, uh, what do you think about when they are trying to kind of scale up, hit the next level, so on and so forth? How do you think leaders can best manage kind of some of the sh- like the real deal? Like, let's talk about the stress that comes with that, mm-hmm. the stretching, feeling like, oh, my gosh, I went from one team member. Now I have two and my product suite has expanded, you know, all of those things. Mm-hmm. How do we handle those shifts energetically? Like, can you give us some some tips on what we can do to manage? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the first thing, and we've all heard it, but self-care, right? It's important Mm -hmm. to create space for ourselves. When you envision that, you know, future version of yourself that is just crushing it, she's got the team, she's got the product suite, she's got all these things. She's probably still making time for herself and her family, number one priority, right? So why wouldn't we do that today? Uh, Sometimes we think, well, let me just hustle a little bit and then I'll relax. No. We need to tap into that today. So when you envision that future version of yourself and how she's being in her business, you must be in that way now. So she's probably creating time for self-care. She's probably going to get a massage. She's probably still doing the things that make her feel really good and really rested and recharged. Um, So that's the one piece of it. And then another piece of it that I myself have really connected with recently is when we see other people who are doing the thing, right? When we see other people who have the booming businesses that we want and the incredible dream teams that we want and you you scrolling on Instagram and you're like, man, like I just wish I was where she was at. I just wish I could get there. Instead of thinking thoughts like that, I really encourage you to just notice the dialogue that's going on and see if you can shift into, okay, the fact that I'm seeing this and the fact that I'm inspired by this means that I already have it within me. Because life's a mirror, right? When you are seeing someone doing something so amazing, the reason you're lit up by it is because you already hold all of the personal resources within you as well to do the same thing. So something I've been doing in real time and you catch yourself. There's no judgment on the thought, right? We all have our days. We all feel the little jealous bug creep in. Sometimes we're human, right? I just really encourage you to begin catching yourself. And when you see those people who are doing and being and embodying all of the things that you're desiring instead of being like, well, dang it, why am I not there? Shift into, well, if she can do it, that means I can do it. The reason I'm excited about it is because I must have all the skills, the characteristics, the experience that I need to make that happen too. And it's also getting kind of into the woo. I believe it's the universe delivering you an example of, hey, you're one step closer. The fact that you have attracted this person into your reality is kind of a a little mini sign almost of, all right, you're on the right path. You're attracting people in this frequency. You're seeing it being done. You're seeing the evidence, right? Like when we, a lot of us will do that when we're working through a limiting belief, right? Well, seek for the evidence of the, how this belief is false, right? Mm -hmm. Same kind of thing. This is evidence being displayed to you of how many other people are doing it. You absolutely can do it too. Uh, So it's like these little mini shifts that you can start to make really, really do add up as you are shifting into that next level you. Oh, goodness. Okay. 
like light bulb moment because I, <laughs> here here's something that I hear often, right? So I'm going to shift a little bit yeah. because I'm thinking about, you know, those big and bad leaders who are like at the top of the game, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the phrases that I hear so often, so for example, Jenna Kutcher mm -hmm. at the top of her game, she's freaking amazing, love everything about her. But one of the examples that I used to hear a bunch when she was doing episodes and blog posts about it is she took her team on this like incredible retreat, right? Mm -hmm. And I believe it's like a team of 10. They flew first class, all of these things. And you know that one of the things that I plan is team retreats. But one of the phrases that I would hear so often that kind of came out of all of that was, yeah, but I'm not Jenna Kutcher. Mm. And what you're saying about like seeing examples that you look up to and not using them to almost invalidate what you can achieve and what yeah. you can experience within your own business. Like that was such a light bulb moment for me. So like, what do you think? Like, is it a good idea almost like as you're making those shifts and kind of combating those thoughts, right? And those limitations you're putting on yourself. Is mm -hmm. it almost a good idea to find and seek out examples of the leaders and the CEOs who you would love to not emulate, but you know, you would love to have your own version yeah. of what it is that they have accomplished? Yeah, totally. Um, awesome question. And I, I'm I think I could take it two different ways. I think one side of the coin is yes, absolutely, especially kind of going off what we just talked through. Uh, the fact that you can find this long list of evidence as to all these incredible women who are doing uh, what you want to do, like major possibility, uh, so much yeah, possibility. Like I, all these people did it. Of course I could do it too, right? Like if you're in that headspace, I think, heck yes, like make that list, follow those women, feel inspired every time you see them pop up on your feed, you know, use that as another uh, checkbox, another tally mark rather of like, yes, another example. Yes, another piece of evidence. I got this, right? And then mm -hmm. the other side of the coin, which I hear doing a lot of the work that I do, comparisonitis, right? Kind of Ooh. what you what you just said of like, well, I'm not Jenna Kutcher. So if we're still in that category of if the thought of, you know, looking at all these people on your feed who are 10 steps ahead of you gives you immediate tightness in the chest, then perhaps that's maybe not the best thing to do. And rather than I, I hear this a lot and there's no like shame or sh I'm not throwing shade on anyone who's done this, like, well, just unfollow the people who trigger you. So I think there's power, yes, to kind of setting some energetic boundaries of like maybe this person makes you kind of feel some kind of way. Mm -hmm. I always encourage you instead of just unfollowing and ignoring that trigger like why are you triggered <laughs> right like right let's maybe spend some time there of okay how can we maybe get you to the other side of the coin what is it about these people that really make you question your own power and your own abilities and your own confidence it's okay and this is the biggest thing I don't want you to judge it I don't want you to judge yourself for feeling feelings of jealousy or comparing yourself or feeling behind these are all all very normal and uh, common subconscious beliefs. We've been really programmed uh, from you know day one of life, but also hundreds of years as a society to to buy into this idea of there's only so much to go around. Uh, mm -hmm. Scarcity. We're all there's only so much money. There's only so many jobs. There's only so many opportunities. There's only so many famous people. Right? Like there's only so much of something. We're really shift, seeing a shift in the paradigm right now. But I just want you to first honor yourself if you do feel, you know, when you're looking at all these other people, uh, it's okay if you do feel that way. And let's just get curious, kind of from a bird's eye view. So can you kind of bring your uh, awareness like almost outside of your body and just begin to notice like who when I look at someone like Jenna Kutcher, I really begin to feel really bad about myself. Okay. Okay, let's get curious. What is that stemming from? Is it because I want to be where she's at? Is it because I never think I'll make it there? Like really just beginning to get curious uh, in a non-judgmental way, in a really loving way. I always like to think of that voice that does feel kind of uh, 
riled up a little bit as the inner child, right? It's a younger version of yourself. When you can start to look at it from that point of view, you can really come at it from a nurturing point of view. Um, So if you're on that side of the coin, I would begin to get really curious and uh, see if you can work through some of that stuff because it is really such a beautiful experience when you can scroll your Instagram feed and leave feeling lit up rather than leave feeling so down on yourself, right? Like what a refreshing feeling if you can scroll for 15 minutes and leave being like, yes, all these incredible women are crushing it and I can crush it too, right? How often Mm -hmm. can you say that? It's okay if you can't say that right now, but how can we begin to shift into that and really into the belief that all these women doing it, all these women that have what I want is simply a reflection of the fact that I can have it too. Amen to that. And uh, I just thought about like the outcome of what someone has, because I feel like that's very often what we're jealous about, right? Is that outcome. But as leaders and as CEOs, one of the things that I see come up a lot is the fact that, okay, but sometimes the input of what someone is putting in to achieve that outcome does not match who we are as individuals, right? So when I look at I don't know. I don't have a technical example, actually. But if I look at somebody who maybe is that super go-getter type A personality, like can do the hustle, work the 60 hour work week because that's what we got to do to get there. Mm -hmm. And like they have this incredible outcome, like monetarily, team wise, everything. We're like, wow, they are killing the game. But if I look at myself as a leader and the way that I have built my business, that would not jive Mm -hmm. because that does not match who I am as an individual. And I would love to get your perspective on that. Yeah, I'm so on the same page. This has been something um, I'm now like creeping up on year two in my online business. So it's like, Mm -hmm. you know, what are the new intentions? What are the new goals? What's the next level version of myself? It's I'm like real time kind of going through this. It's like, do I want to try to hustle my face off and hit this crazy year if it's going to result in me working my face off? No, that literally feels so exhausting. It feels so wrong. It feels so out of alignment. Um, And I use that word all the time. Alignment to me just means like, does it feel fun? Does it feel expansive in my body? Mm -hmm. Like when I think about that possibility, like, ooh, do I light up? Or I'm like, ugh. No, not fun. I don't (laughs) want to do that. Um, So on this note of like looking at these people, I was just having this conversation with a girlfriend of mine in the online space as well. It's like when we see even these business coaches and once again, Mm -hmm. no shade, it's just an interesting observation. When we see these business coaches out there that are celebrating their clients, huge months and their big wins and, you know, all of these things, it's like, okay, can we get a little bit of a a sneak peek into what went into that? Can we like really see what went on behind the scenes there? Because I know personally, like I want to have a lot of freedom in my day. I want to, you know, not start work till 1130. I want to be able to pick up and travel when I want. It's like for, I I think on this topic, it's really going to come down to you. Like what is uh, entrepreneurship? What's the intention behind it? Is it to make a lot of money? Okay, awesome. You could do that really, really quickly. Or like the way that I am choosing to tackle that. I want to make a lot of money. I talk about it all the time. I think money is awesome. I think money is good. I think impact is good. With more money, sometimes comes more impact. Like I'm here for it. And I would rather, you know, really treat it as the long game and build out the systems and build out the teammates to support me while still staying rooted and grounded in my seven figure self, she's going to be working 11 to four o'clock every day. She's going to be able to take Fridays off if she wants. She's going to be able to pick up and go and travel and do what she wants when she wants. Like I must embody that today. So, okay, maybe I could make more money if I worked from seven to seven, but I'm not going to do that right now because I don't want to do that right now. Right. So (laughs) getting really clear on, you know, what is your intention? Why did you decide to be an entrepreneur originally? And really staying rooted in that and just always bringing a, uh, always looking at things from that bird's eye view, like mm-hmm. what you just said. When you see those other leaders, when you see these other business owners hitting these crazy months and you're like, what the heck? Like, why can't I get there? <laughs> really just questioning who knows the method to making that happen and just being cool with that, right? Like some people uh, – really just grounding down into you are right on time. That's like Mm -hmm. what I'm hearing right now. Like you are right on time. You are right where you need to be, sister. You are learning the things you need to learn. You are experiencing what you need to experience in this moment. And it's like, what's the rush, right? I said that to a client today. What is the rush? We're always in this 
hurry to get to the next level. And it's like, you probably became an entrepreneur to make a huge impact, to, uh, you know, grow your team, scale, provide jobs for new people, to serve the heck out of your clients. It's like, well, take a moment. You're probably doing that right now, right? In real time, you're probably already doing that. So just bringing it back to that too, I think is really important. Yes. What is the rush, right? I think like what you're saying right now, it's just hitting me on like, this is very introspective Mm -hmm. to an extent. And it's about you and knowing who you are and what you value, right? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that is so, so good. Okay. I have to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's episode, Primally Pure. Y'all, I'm not going to get too deep into this, but I've tried a lot of natural deodorants and my husband disapproves of 99.9% of them, but not my new Primally Pure Charcoal Deodorant. I have been so excited to share this with you because I have been testing it myself for three full months before I decided that it was worth sharing. This is absolutely my hands down favorite natural deodorant and I've tried at least five or six brands by now. And even better, it can be your new favorite too. You can get your next order for 10% off by using the code TIANA10. That's right, T-I-A-N-N-A-1-0, and you're on your way to your new favorite deodorant. And hopefully your significant other will approve of this one. (laughs) So I think... Oh, I could ask you so many questions. I feel like we could just like talk for another know, hour, but we're, we're not going to do it. That's no good. <laughs> <laughs> but I would love to start, not even close to being wrapped up, but start to wrap up the conversation uh, just by hearing what you have to say about this inner dialogue with leaders and how you think they could be talking to themselves as they make these decisions. Because I want to tap into the reality that like, To some extent, we are always discovering ourselves, right? I feel like I come up with some new element of my personality and what I want, and it's changing all the time, and I have to be okay with that. So I want to hear about like your take on kind of that internal dialogue as we're just changing all the time and figuring out what do we want? What type of leader do we want to be? Like, I'm a soul sister with you. When you said, I want to work from 11 to 4, I was like, yes, Yes. you're my, you're, I knew I liked you. (laughs) (laughs) But- But I don't want to invalidate the fact that that's not everybody. I have friends who truly do thrive doing more. Yeah. And that feels good to them. So I just want to hear. Yeah, I want to hear your thoughts, your take. Okay, you got to. What's the question? Just so I'm clear. So I answered this the right way. Yes, because I rambled. A no, time. it was good. It was so good. I was so in- invested <laughs> in it. I was like, oh, no, train of thought went totally another way. <laughs> okay, so what what is your take on kind of that inner dialogue as we are working through what do I yes, want? Who, got who am I? Who am I as the leader? Totally. So uh, one of my mentors said to me several months back, our businesses, at least the way that I do it as running a soul aligned, really intuitive led business, um, our businesses are simply an extension of ourselves. And I think sometimes we have like this wall and sometimes the wall is important, right? Because we never want to like determine our own happiness or our own self-worth or our own pride based off of the financial results of our business. So that's definitely not what I'm saying here. Um, so there is a balance boundary there. And when it comes to, you know, our message and our impact and what we want to give to the world, I believe it truly is an extension of us. It's an extension of our heart. So if we as humans are constantly evolving, constantly growing, I hate the phrase, but like if we're not growing, we're dying, right? Like we're all like constantly shifting and learning new things and expanding as individuals. I believe, of course, our business is going to shift, of course. Why wouldn't it? That would not make sense. So Mm -hmm. what I believe on this topic is when it comes to that inner dialogue, um, I myself have been here. I've worked with many clients who have pivoted or who have shifted. Um, One piece that I'm giggling about, it's probably not as big of a shift as you think. I remember when I really (laughs) started to bring in some more intuitive work and some spiritual support in my business, I was like, oh my gosh, like it's so different. Like people aren't going to know what to think. And all my girlfriends in the online space are like, uh... I would have expected that. I thought you already were doing that, Michaela. So I think that's one element of like, maybe the shift is not as drastic as you think. Because right, a lot of fear comes up about, are people going to know what I do? Like I built this beautiful brand around this one thing. Can I change it? I don't know. What My audience is all this one type of 
ideal client? What if I'm shifting? There's all those fears, right? My first kind of nugget is it's probably not as drastic as you think. And the right people are probably going to love the shift because your tribe, your audience, your community, they're growing with you too, right? They're hanging around for the ride. They're probably going through a very similar journey as well. They're probably on the same exact wavelength, I promise. And then two, just like the inner dialogue that's going on of like, oh my gosh, can I do it? Is it different? Mm, I don't know. It's really just beginning to, once again, bring some love and some compassion to that voice. Let's not beat her up. Let's not stress her out. Uh, It's, once again, that inner child. So let's just really begin to kind of witness the conflicting voices or the parts, we call it in NLP, the parts within that are maybe a little bit in conflict and just allow them both to come forward and speak. So honoring the voice that's maybe a little bit fearful of the shift, honoring, you know, but what about the brand? What about the ideal clients? What about the audience? All those things really honor it, allow it to come forward, allow it to speak. And then also, I think more importantly is honor the voice within that is guiding you to shift. The reason that you're being called to shift, it's not a coincidence. It's not a random idea that, oh, maybe this will be fun. I really believe it's because you're you're being guided by something greater, by something more divine than us here to shift for a reason. There's probably something really magical at the end of that journey. So really honoring that voice as well, the voice that says, oh, it's time for an expansion or, oh, I really want to start bringing this into my coaching practice or, oh, I really want to bring on this team member to help us build out this new project or this new product, this thing that feels maybe a little bit different, but feels so exciting and so expansive and just so beautiful, right? Like really honoring that voice to come through because it's very easy to bury that voice down. That's like the dreamer, right? That's the visionary within. That's the that's your intuition, right? That's spirit speaking straight through you or your intuition or your, your heart, whatever you want to call it. I believe when you listen to that voice and when you uh, lead from that voice and when you create from that voice, I always kind of uh, like see and, and explain it as like that voice is guiding you over the rainbow and like at the end of the rainbow, it's like that pot of gold. It's that massive abundance. It's that uh, more, more abundance than you ever could have imagined in your wildest dreams from simply following the excitement, following the bliss following the joy. It's okay if it sounds crazy. It's okay if it feels just, you know, way out of left field. Like it's okay trusting in that excitement. You will always be abundantly provided for. So that's really what I would guide you through if you are kind of feeling a shift or a change. You're changing as a person and you don't know how that's going to affect your business. Really allowing all the voices to come through, all the voices to to speak their piece and trusting the reason that you had the vision is because it's for you. So what happens if you really surrendered to that and didn't always have the how, right? It's not always our job to have the how and trusting that when you simply lead from that space, the how is going to unfold its way like very, very quickly for you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh my, okay, yes. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> you're speaking to me. You're speaking to everybody listening right now. Awesome. <laughs> oh my gosh. Good. good, good, good. I'm glad. I know a lot of people are shifting right now. I don't know if it's with what's going on in the world or to shift in paradigm in some way. I know a lot mm-hmm. of people are, are really evolving right now and it's beautiful. So trust in it. Yes. Okay. So as we officially, officially wrap up, I just want to give you the space. Is there any you know final thoughts or any last words you want to leave people with today? Yeah. So I think for listeners who are maybe still the solopreneur uh, or now you are established with your dream team and you're crushing it, um, what's coming through to me right now, especially like in this time, is to just really give yourself grace in this. You're doing uh, the absolute best that you can with the resources that you've got. You are right on time. Like I said earlier, really trusting in the divine plan, really trusting in divine timing, trusting in when you follow the joy, you are safe, you're secure, you are abundantly provided for. And yeah, you're just, you're right on time wherever you at you are at. So supported in all ways, um, both in what you can see and what you can't see as well. So um, I hope that this episode today really served you and uh, just reminded you of that truth that you already know that within, you know, deep down of how safe and guided you are. But just another message for you today to remind you. Oh, yes. And I'm so corny for this, but this message was right on time. (laughs) 
boom. Yeah. It I was it. mic drop. That is it. Okay, Michaela, friend, tell everybody how they can connect with you uh, in all of the places. Yeah. So, of course, I'm over on Instagram the most. You can find me at Michaela McNatt. I'm, all, I'm hanging out there quite often. And then I have also got my podcast, the Magnify More podcast. You can listen to anywhere you listen to your podcasts. We talk about business, spirituality, mindset, NLP, Reiki, energetics, all the things, all the integration between mind, body, soul, and business. So um, would love to connect with you guys. Oh, yeah, guys. Best believe I'm going to be tuning in too. So y'all better head on over there. Well, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. This was fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. So much love to all of your listeners.